Brian White is here because I have confusion. I have some <laughs> confusion. And I know that Brian can help me sort it out. FSD version 13 is the number one subject on everybody's mind because it is the gateway to the entire project. I mean, once we get FSD version 13 done, theoretically, we will be able to see the future. That's what uh, the old 1010 <laughs> thing was about. Um, and uh, so I, I got questions. I have questions. So Elon says it'll be soon. You, you think it'll be this week? Version 13? Yes. I don't know. I don't know. We have uh, seen some test vehicles out in some of the usual places. I believe we've seen this week alone some uh, vehicles on Chuck Cook's street, uh, but I am not 100% certain on that. I'm less worried about version when on version 13 um, because there's a lot of people who aren't even on the latest versions of 12 that we have because if 13 is what we believe it is, I mean, I don't care if it takes six months. It's going to be, it's going to be the real deal. So uh, when will it come? We don't know. Um, there are some interesting things that go on under the hood and I'm reaching out to a number of the, of the FSD experts this week to see who I can get on to talk about it. But if you've ever noticed, sometimes it will behave differently at the same intersection three different times. And you think, that's, that's weird. You did better last time or you did worse last time, but you did something different each time. And uh, I, I don't have a new version of the software since last time I was here. What's going on under the hood? And <clears throat> the only real answer that we have right now that I'm aware of is the butterfly effect. The photons are hitting the sensors different, photons in, behavior out, and it uh, it is reading it from scratch every time. Right. The entire world is not a series of programmed routes. Uh, so it has to think on its feet, which is difficult when you don't have feet. Yes. Or when, when you don't have a biological brain, when you're really having to go off of some man-made brain. Yeah. So we do the same thing. Um, you know, if I go through an intersection five times, I'm going to do something different every single time. And uh, that might be because of, uh, you know, some butterfly that squish gets squished on my window, as as you point out, um, and so um, yeah, it makes sense that the that this brain would would be varying its activity uh, in similar circumstances. Well, my grandma never drove, but she did the same thing at every intersection, which was stomp her foot on the imaginary brake pedal and pretend to freak out. Grandma, you've got to stop doing that; it's very distracting. Yeah, 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 yeah. So here's a, this this is one of the things I'm confused about. Will version 13 already have all the goodies like reverse and whatnot from day one? Or will those be built in but not turned on and be turned on with different 13.6, 13.9, whatever? Those are the questions that we need to get answers okay. to. Okay. And I have not seen answers. Um, I believe that they are trying to get all of those things working so that they will all be in 13 upon launch. Would not surprise me if they're not. We're still waiting for Banish. Uh, we're still waiting for Unpark, which is when you can just engage FSD from a standstill in your driveway, and it'll do that. We're waiting for Reverse in a situation other than Auto Park. Uh, and uh, we got to learn how to read signs, guys. We have to. It is it is critical. There, are, there still remain just two big failures in my city. Uh, one is at a flashing red light about half the time. It says, ah, I'm going to wait for it to turn green. My friend, we will wait here until the heat death of the universe. And the other is of course, no right on red. It's like, <laughs> that doesn't affect me. I can't read. Right. And unfortunately, both of those scenarios are on my street. Ah. So it makes, uh, <clears throat> it makes it so I have to drive a half mile before I can engage it uh, huh. because it's, Deadly if I don't, or, yeah. I mean, I guess stopping forever yeah. uh, at, a, at a stop sign is not, is not the end of the world, but it would be for whoever's behind me. Yes, it might be. And they might, they could cause road rage. You know, we don't want road rage. That would be bad. Um, Elon and Ashok both say that it is five times better. Now, accident avoidance is not the same thing as driver decision to interrupt. Am I right or wrong? 
hundred percent, hundred percent. I know people who will disengage all the time because they want to, they want to drive in ways that I think are patently unsafe. Now, mind you, uh, they'll say, look, I haven't been in an accident in 10, 15 years. I don't know how, because you're scaring, you're scaring the ghosts of my ancestors. This is terrible driving. Uh, but <clears throat> most of my disengagements are, um, like today I disengaged because there was a, a big puddle. One of the storm drains was backed up mm -hmm. and I would rather drive over the yellow line than, than, you know, make a puddle, a giant tsunami that's eight feet high. Uh, I'm not going to, I don't need, I'll just disengage for that. And it asked me why. And I was like, just never mind. I'm not going to tell you. I don't want to ruin the surprise, but mostly it's, I've either changed my destination or we're there. And it no longer asks every time when you're there, only if you disengage right, you know, long enough before you get there. Uh, so no, it's done very well. And we went to Ikea a couple of weeks ago, good 60 miles each way. And <clears throat> there were no disengagements. No. I mean, it took two very wrong turns. No. Uh, one where we were supposed to go up a couple blocks and turn left. It's like, nah, I'm going to turn left here and get on the highway. No. So that was, that was a, that was a big delay. Uh, but I was like, let's see where we're going. This is an adventure. <laughs> Maybe it knows a secret entrance to Ikea. <laughs> it did not. We had to loop around. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it was not unsafe. And if I wasn't in the car, I wouldn't have known that it made a wrong turn. And it must have trained on someone who made a wrong turn. <laughs> and I was going to say, um, I have famously made wrong turns. In fact, my son says that if you're going to a new location that you've never been before and you don't have to make at least one U-turn, then you haven't gone on a trip. You haven't gone, you know, it's like this, you, you know, it's just part of the trip. If you don't, if you've never, anyway, that's his. I feel like there's easier ways to say you didn't raise him right. <laughs> <He's>, <laughs> well, he, he is the comedian in the family. And I believe he says it way funnier than that. Oh, yeah. look at these savage burns, you guys. I'm... In the comments, should Randy <laughs> keep roasting me? Or does that even count? <laughs> Maybe not. Should Tesla provide robo-taxi rides as soon as it's as good as Waymo? In accidents per mile. That's a very good question, Randy. I love it. I would say, um, why not roll out a, a beta, just kind of an expanded beta? Why not um, put it in one market, you know, geofence it, not because it has to, but because that's where the customers know to get it. Um, but I think even before that, if you look at the south end of Giga Texas, there's a very narrow strip where they're putting in what looks like a walking path, but there's doors along the walking path that get into the building. Maybe that's going to be part of a robo taxi test system. Why not have, why not test it in the parking lot? Just have 10, 20, 30 of them out there all day, just shuttling people. You, you hail it, you get in, it takes you to your exit. It comes back and grabs someone else. Why not do that all day? Um, but I think, uh, yeah, as soon as it's, as soon as you can, I'm confident there'll need to be more real world testing. Get it, get it done. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, it would seem to me, first of all, if Waymo has been approved, then you could just, if you can prove that you're as good or better than Waymo, then regulators shouldn't have a problem. And then in terms of liability, you're, you're just accepting the same amount of liability as Waymo is. Exactly. Um, in, in terms of fear of the rider getting in, apparently Waymo's got plenty of people that are not afraid to ride it. In fact, I, I did kind of a that question on X the other day, and most people said, no, I'm not afraid to drive in, to ride in a Waymo. Uh, the Waymo's only drive in the city, I guess, and have a max speed of around 30 to 35. Um, so, you know, accidents at 30 to 35 caused by your vehicle don't usually, you know, bring death at least. Um, it takes a, another car going 60 miles an hour ramming into you to create that problem. Um, so it just seemed to me that that would be a good criteria. I, I think uh, absolutely. Start with surface streets. If that's what's um, commonly accepted, sure, go for it. But I, I would agree with you. Um, sooner, better than later. And <laughs> just got to get it. Just got to get it safe enough. All right. So based on what you know, being you drive a car that has 
full self-driving. You've driven it thousands and thousands of miles. You have are certainly one of the top two or three, five, 10 people. I don't know which one you are in terms of staying in touch, staying on top of all of this stuff and and finding out what all these guys that are smarter than me are saying, like Reigns today, where Reigns, you know, finally made it really clear in terms of how definitely the, the vehicle is, or that the computers are doing some kind of an analysis after a disruption, after a, an intervention, they are doing a, what happens the next two seconds? Would there have been an accident, et cetera, which I've been saying for months. But anyway, so you're paying attention to all this kind of stuff if you were going to make, you know, a, a, if you were going to have to take a bet on a um, on a pool right now, what would be your date that uh, RoboTaxi hits the streets? When you say RoboTaxi, do you mean any model, not just RoboCab? Oh, yeah. No, I mean RoboTaxi, me, <clears throat> me putting our car out to rent. Um, okay. So to clarify there, you mean us or Tesla? Yes, us. Letting, let, letting us. You and I? Button on the app. And my car leaves my garage, it goes out and uh, and starts hailing rides. Two years. Two years? Wow. Yeah. I don't think it'll be ready to do that in a year. The software might be ready, but to get the whole network up and running behind it, uh, validating uh, riders, uh, you know, getting all the payment processing set up, I think there's going to be a whole lot of steps between the car's work and now we can accept uh, commercial rides. Now you've got these guys up in the Bay Area that are doing, and I guess in Austin, both uh, employees that are doing what you had mentioned a few minutes ago on a, I'm sure you meant that these rides in the parking lot would be no driver at all, but you've got these. I have to fix my camera real quick. My oh, okay. tripod is loose and oh. I just noticed I'm getting lower and lower. Oh, there, there you go. <laughs> I just so, kept, it's just kept dipping. <laughs> so we have these, we have these uh, supervised rides up in San Francisco area and in Austin, um, where I'm assuming that if they're going to try to do a robo taxi type experience, they're using the app. They're using, they, I would think that they would have some maybe fake payment systems so that they can deal with those. I would, I would think they would be trying to duplicate this as much as possible so that they didn't have to run into lots of problems in terms of uh, uh, starting, starting the pro project. Yes, but it takes time. It mm -hmm. takes time. So I think, yeah, in terms of you and I operating our vehicles as robo taxi, my guess is two years. So what do you think happens this year in summer or what do you think Elon Musk thinks? And when he says he thinks there'll be robo taxis coming out this summer. Um, I didn't hear this summer. I heard end of 25, but, but I have been known to be optimistic, but either way, I think what he means is limited, not you and me, but someone somewhere, you know, when they said, um, this version, what was it? Version 12 will be out in October, uh, on, on Cybertruck, Matt Wallace said, uh, if it's on one truck, I don't count it. It has to be on my truck. Yeah, okay. And uh, they did. They got it on his truck, so he counted it. Uh, but uh, I don't know that it would go to everyone. It, it, assuming it is salt, I don't think everyone will have access to it uh, within months. It could really a year. Okay. So California, when he says California and Texas, and then in a more recent uh, conversation, I forget where it was, he said, well, it could be California, Texas, and other states as well. In 2025, you think that's still going to be somehow limited in, in maybe Tesla vehicles, Tesla own their own vehicles, possibly uh, only being put out there? Or so I am deeply skeptical that we will see any commercial rides in 25. I believe Elon when he said he's known to be optimistic. Okay. Yeah. If commercial rides are available, <clears throat> I wouldn't necessarily be limited to Tesla, though it could. I think they would want to onboard some owners. Uh, but it would be a, a very narrow pool where they would uh, hand select a handful of operators and say, look, I know you've got 10, 20 cars on Turo. Would you like to be our first uh, partner? Mm -hmm. um, and I think that would be a, a good way to do it. It would also having one person to deal with instead of 20 uh, for those 20 vehicles would also be a reduced headache and they could find ways to make it work for everyone. So I think that would be the approach I would take, but Apart from you, no one asks. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> okay, my <laughs> last my last in this series of questions. Oh boy. Some, some thinks some people have said that they think cyber cabs will actually start ramping in quarter three or quarter four and be shipping in volume in quarter one of 2026. Uh, you're the factory guy. You're the guy that tries to get a, a, a an idea on that kind of stuff. Do you think that they will be ramping in 25 and be in big numbers in 26? So my first question would be, who says that? Uh, yeah, who was it? <laughs> I can't remember. I have so yeah. many guests and so many. Yeah. <clears throat> um, I I don't expect it to begin ramping in 25. I expect it to begin ramping in 26, uh, which is the stated plan so far. Um, but it's such a simple vehicle. Its ramp will not be as complicated as anything they've built apart from megapacks. Uh, so this is, uh, I mean, the, the simplicity is at every turn. It is an amazing piece of engineering in that way. Made a whole video about that. It's uh, pinned to my, the top of my X account because um, I'm so proud of the work, but it is, uh, yeah, they don't need to, they don't need to. Um, we'll have an idea when it might happen because I assume we'll be able to see the equipment being loaded in. Mm -hmm. Uh, because it will be, even though it's a much simpler design, a simpler product, uh, it'll still be a noticeable amount of equipment. Oh, yeah, sure. Okay, yes, for sure. Uh, okay, and yeah, so then having said that, Brian, first of all, people should follow you on your channel. They should follow you everywhere. They should definitely go over to Patreon and send you hundreds and hundreds of dollars a month. And then, in, and then while they're doing all of that, I'm going to pin that video that, not pin, mm. I'm going to put a card up for that very video that you were talking about in terms of the simplicity of the vehicle, because I think that's an important piece of information in terms of how Tesla goes forward uh, with the unbox process and with the simpler vehicles, no matter what they are, they're all going to be simpler now that we have unboxed. I think it's, yes, it's not just unboxed. It's absolutely everything. It's, it's really a beautiful machine from the perspective of how, how it's manufactured. You can make anything look pretty, no matter how simple it is, you can make it look pretty, but the way it's designed for manufacturing is just breathtaking. <laughs> All right. So that's pinned and pinned. Uh, that is uh, the card is up. What's wrong with my brain? All of a sudden. Oh, well, don't no, please. Stop. <laughs> In the comments. <laughs> <laughs> it's been great talking to you.